mixing night. We're gonna we're gonna give the uh, a few seconds for the mixing night community to catch up on the live broadcast. Mazzy, are you ready for mixing night, baby? Oh, here we go! <laughs> Welcome to mixing night. I am your host Ken Lewis here with the lovable hellhound Mazakeen Lewis, holding down treats and security for the evening. I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry, and tonight is sync night. Woo! We are bringing the drama tonight. The show is absolutely action-packed with tons of tips from several uh, sync music pros. You're definitely going to want to tune in and catch what they have to say. Uh, I can uh, certainly teach you a thing or two about sync as well. You know, I've, I've done all right in it. Uh, you can see the full show rundown on the screen next to you. Um, so we're going to do things a little bit differently tonight. Uh, I guarantee you tonight you will leave much smarter than you arrived. But first... Uh, who are obscene stealers? Who who are obscene stealers? Who are these people? So, um, I'm an artist now. I, I don't I don't know how that happened. I think Michael Moss just talked me into it. So, me and Michael Moss are obscene stealers. Uh, Michael's going to be on the broadcast in about ten or fifteen minutes for a live interview. Uh, if you don't know who Michael Moss is, Michael Moss is the movie trailer boss. That man has done movie trailers for, uh, I'll let him tell you, um, The Batman, Milan, Fast and Furious, Star Wars, like, he's legit. Anyway, so, uh, our first single, Danger, just debuted tonight. Um, I'm going to play it a little bit later, but uh, Michael's going to be on to join me. The other amazing thing that we're doing on the broadcast tonight is we are giving away uh, an Ericsson Labs EL800 uh, tube vocal microphone, uh, which is back there. If you can see it, uh, it's it's right next to the C800 because we're doing a C800 shootout live against the Ericsson EL800 um, on the broadcast later on. And before the broadcast, uh, we did a bunch of recording. We recorded trombone, acoustic guitar, and rap vocals through that combination that you see, uh, you know, capsules lined up just like that. My God, <laughs> I've never heard a microphone ever sound like the C800, and it has never lost a shootout. Um, and the EL800 sounds identical to my mic. Uh, none of us can hear the difference, and you guys are going to hear it on later. So we are giving one of these away, but the other thing that we are doing, uh, because only one person gets to win it, we are going to do a group buy. So I'm going to break this down later on in the show, but um, we're doing an Ericsson EL800 group buy. You guys got to tune in for that. It's going to be absolutely bananas. Um, and I've already talked to a bunch of people who are interested in it. I think we're going to get to that 15 tier. Uh, let's see. What else is... So I'm going to get straight to the sprint mixes. And we have such an action-packed show tonight. Where is... So I'm sprinting an old favorite tonight called Sacred Circles. Any fan of the show has definitely heard Sacred Circles in the past. Man, it has been ages since I have uh, sprinted this, but it is historically one of my favorites to do. And uh, so if you don't know what sprint mixing is, sprint mixing is 10 minutes, 30 mix stems that I've had my uh, assistant randomize all of the volumes. So I don't know how they get put back together and I have 10 minutes to make all decisions where everything goes and how it blends together for 30 stems. That equates to roughly 20 seconds per stem to make all decisions that I'm gonna make on that. And the objective is, a few objectives. One, make the best rough mix that you possibly can in 10 minutes. That is a real, real world scenario. And uh, the other thing is, shed the technology. I've seen so many people, the first instinct is to reach for a plugin, reach for a plugin, reach for a tool, reach for a tool. Your first instinct should be reach for these. Listen, let the music tell you what to do and react to the music. And then if the music tells you to grab a plugin, then grab a plugin. But usually it tells you to balance things first. So, uh, so I am going to put 10 minutes on the clock. We are going sacred circles tonight. Uh, And man, tonight's show is just a crazy, crazy cookup. We have so, so much going on for you for sync. There it is. Uh, 10 minutes on the clock. Boom. This is, uh, come on, Ken. This is Sacred Circles. All right. And you are at 
mixing that. Mazzy, how are you, Bay? Oh, I'm already on the clock. Shit. All right, Maz. Wish me luck. Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm Ken Lewis.
Instead of finding out what's up ahead So look before you leave Else you may find yourself among the next Instead of finding out what's up ahead
right. Uh, well, I'm Ken Lewis. You have found Mixing Night. Uh, that was a sprint mix of Sacred Circles. Uh, and, uh, whew, that is so brain frying. Um, did you see right the very first time I started stumbling and getting in trouble was the first time I started adding the tech. It's just the way it goes. Um, because it takes your brain out of what's the music telling me mode and it puts your brain straight into, uh, oh, what are my eyeballs telling me mode? And then your brain isn't paying as much attention to your ears as you want it to be. Uh, and then you get poor decision making. So mix with your ears as much as possible, not your eyes. Also, did you notice the um, how I'm utilizing the SSL controller? Uh, I don't know how much you could see maybe from above, but I am not looking at the screen very often. I'm looking across the, uh, the faders and I'm skipping fader banks and um and i'm scrolling through to see like where my tracks are up here and i'm trying to mix with my hands so that i don't have to mix with my eyes and i'm setting my volumes all by the faders turning the pan pots up here and uh and also with the center channel um let me just show you guys this real quick so the way you're supposed to use this because we're given um, these plugins away tonight to a couple lucky people. So, channel strip to foam. So, what you do with this thing, I can't show you everything right now, but you put one of these across every Pro Tools channel, and then you have your own internal SSL desk. It's the craziest thing. And it works and sounds just like an SSL. Um, and uh, trust me, I should know, I have done two blue million analog mixes on SSL consoles. And the, the thing that I've found is um, when you see how this lays out and then and then you have, okay. Um, but let me get to the channel strip two. Come on, there we go. So the channel strip two uh, uses this UC1. I don't know if you can see this really well in the front or the top, but the UC1 maps out this perfectly. And, uh, and it also maps out the uh, bus controller. And at first I thought, okay, so let me back up. The only thing the UC1 controls is the channel strip two and the bus. And at first I was like, ah, I really wanted to control all of my plugins, right? And then I got it and I realized what SSL did. And they just laid out an SSL console over top of Pro Tools. That's, or whatever DAW you have, it doesn't matter. And it works and feels just like an old analog SSL, except for reaching down the console here, I'm bringing the console to me and I'm tweaking here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see on screen, uh, all of my actions are being mirrored here. And it sounds and works just like a real analog SSL desk. It's the craziest shit. And uh, so, yeah, that's my new love. Um, anyway, if you saw how I was utilizing these controllers, sprint mixing, man, I'm, I'm really in love with them. Okay, moving on. Uh, what is next on the show? We are going to get Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss, and the other half of Obscene Stealers uh, up on Zoom. Uh, Jonathan, I might need your help with this. Uh, new meeting? Uh, invite, part it, where? Where's invite? What? Sorry, people. <laughs> Somebody come in here who knows how to do this. We're live, baby. Jonathan, come in and walk me through this, please. It's all good. Jonathan Garcia, his segment is coming right up. All right, what do we got to do? Then you send it to Michael. Via email? Pop, uh, you can do Facebook, he said. Email. Oh, okay. Are you, am I on screen right now? Or? No, you'd be fine. Okay. All right, people, we're almost there, I promise. All this for the movie trailer boss. Well worth it, I assure you. There you are, Michael Moss. Boom. All right. 
my, hopefully Michael's been waiting for that. And uh, I will know when he's participating with me as well. Um, so me and Michael formed Obscene Stealers. It was, hey, Michael Moss, how are you? Hey, good morning. Danger. 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 <laughs> it's going doing? down. Uh, I am doing great. It is release day. So we dropped yeah, the yeah. first single ever from Obscene Stealers, Danger, today, featuring Diraj. Uh, awesome work, Diraj. You fucking murdered it. Um, Crazy guy. So did you, Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. Uh, great to see your face again. Uh, yeah. Long, long time we haven't seen after, like, I think, like, I know, like we talk all the time, but uh, but I, I don't see your face much. Um, but uh, anyway, so tonight is sync night, and I really want to get as much valuable information from you about the lanes of sync that you know the best, so that our viewers can really get a bunch of great information. Um, so uh, why don't you tell me maybe either how you got into sync or best practices or um, you know, what do you think? What are what are your best gems for for sync people tonight? Yeah, so it's a pretty pretty hard to explain, but I'm a full time trailer production music composer, and production music means it's like TV background music, but it's also trailer music. It's kind of like music for all kind of media. Okay, so my advice to get into sync music business would be um, starting with what you can do the best. Like, for example, if you are pretty good in um, recording your own piano tracks or maybe rock tracks or maybe hip hop tracks or something like that, that's pretty requested in the production music area. So people need all this kind of music for the background, for TV, for trailers, for video game trailers. We have many different kind of trailers, you know, video game trailers, movie trailers, TV spots, um, features, etc., etc. And there are so many production music libraries out there which are looking for new talents and it's a new trend right now to feature also many songs with vocals so what we do right now as obscene stealers is uh, pretty requested so we do kind of like epic pop with vocals on top and you can see that stuff everywhere right now on netflix promos television and that's a trend that is pretty new at the moment because a few years ago it was like an non-going thing because vocals are sometimes clutching with the uh, vocals in a documentary or something right. you know right. so when someone is speaking in a background in television uh, usually people didn't like like vocals in a music track but it's a lot requested right now i can see that popping up everywhere like in the new a lot of the wings promo i sent to you a few days ago right where in an yeah, old pop song yeah on it and they remix it into trailer just a little bit and yeah so and my twice yeah uh, and sorry and for those that don't know when you submit a song for sync when they take it you need to immediately provide them stems and those stems give them the ability to remove the lead vocal and make it on instrumental only they give you a lot of flexibility over that so uh, yeah so trailer cutters or tv cutters are cutting usually to stems they use your full mix to listen first to the music but usually they take then the stems, which align to the full mix, so they are as long as the full mixes, and then you know putting away like the drums, and then when something is happening on TV, they're putting in the drums, or maybe they want to have only staccato strings playing alone, and you simply cannot control that in the full mix, so you're working with group stems like short strings, long strings, drums, all kind of groups in your track, you know. Is there a general like how many stems do you give them um it's different i tend to give like 10 to 15 me too yeah that usually that's enough but it's it's uh, different from library to library i work for you know some libraries request like uh five to ten stems in a second pack with maybe 50 stems in there if the track is very big so the editors have all kind of flexibility ah, to see. So no one has to request afterwards. You know right. how it is. You know all set up. Uh, nothing works anymore, and you cannot deliver. Right. Sentences. All your software is updated. Nothing recalls. Yeah. yeah just uh, um, for the viewers, whenever I'm sure Michael does this too. Whenever I finish a song and I know it's uh, headed to Syncland, if possible, the first thing I do is print mixed stems, and 
those mixed stems become my licensing stems uh, for sync. And like Michael said, typically 10 to 15 stereo stems, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy. Drums, bass, keys, strings, lead vocal, background vocals, sound effects, uh, guitars, you know, big, bigger groupings, you know, lead melody, something like that. Um, uh, and just give them enough flexibility and make sure that when you put the stems back together that they're the same song. <laughs> so that helps. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you, I don't know how much you can talk about this, but like, what would be your advice for somebody trying to get into trailer composing who doesn't have any credits? Would you go work for somebody else like you or another camp and build up your experience and your credits? Or would you go alone? And what would you do? Yeah, so I have my own publishing company, which is uh, also publishing trailer music called Audio Tech, but we are only working with the very best people in the field because that's very important in terms of trailer music. It's very hard to get in. It's a small niche area and people only want to work and feature other people, which are sounding like over the top great Hollywood blockbuster mic, you know, without having anything recorded live, by the way, it's mostly everything done by MIDI. By my advice also to my students is um, like listening every day to trailer music and analyzing the build of trailer music. Uh, watching every day, like I'm watching literally every day in the morning while I'm, break, uh, I'm having breakfast and in the afternoon and in the evening trailers to check what's trendy right now. You know, it's, it's <laughs> always smart. changing a little bit, the trend. So, and so even at your level, you're studying the game constantly. Daily. You know, I, I just checked right now, maybe 15 minutes ago, well, what's new on YouTube, you know, and checking what's going on on my tune set. So, when I can detect what's playing off my music and television, etc., it's like a addiction to it a little bit. You know, it's like I'm constantly working, if, even if I'm not working. You know, and analyzing. I, I, I think one of the most crucial things that you said is that all of the people I work with are top level people, and yeah. and it's it, it it's hard to get there. Right, but but it takes it, time and patience and yeah. and a mission and some people like you who came from not being in the music business at all to being one of the kings of trailers. Uh, it's certainly possible, um, but the hard work has got to be there. It is. It, it needs a kind of addiction to it. And when I tell you my short story, I started with a simple piano track 2013, uh, you know, and right now I'm featured in the biggest trailers and I'm sitting in a very small town here in Germany with 2000 people in there. And I have them almost like monthly and it's, it's not magic. It's simply improving your skills. You know, you can watch so many um, tutorials on YouTube, et cetera, uh, how that works. There are many online courses about it, even where you can get stuff from, et cetera. So these days it's much, much easier than when I started in that field like 10 years ago or so to get those skills, like mixing that audio, mixing skills. And the libraries that. now are so good. So yeah, they are. Um, I mean, so many orchestral choices, really incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what are some of the trailers you've worked on um, that, that you started, can talk about? <laughs> yeah, it started 2013 with Spider-Man, um, Bobocop. Um, these days I had like uh, Disney plus Moon Knight. Uh, the newest one was Star Wars Bad Season 2 and Jurassic World Dominion. Um, I cannot talk about it, but everything was hanging here around. I had some trailer placements in there, but <laughs> I didn't mention anything. You know, I had uh, music in Star Wars. I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, I was talking. Oh, you, you don't. You don't. You just see nothing. I just yet, see no. what's you know to your left on screen. That's all. Yeah, no, it's just posters hanging around. Nothing else, you know. And uh, yeah. so, and uh, and obscene stealers. So that kind of really came about super organically. We just started talking and the first thing that we did together was that Cliff Sims Christmas song. Yeah. And we, uh, we hired the Sophia session orchestra and Sophia Bulgaria 53 piece orchestra to play this Christmas arrangement that, that Michael did. And I produced the song and you know, when you just click with somebody and you know it, I think both of us just clicked and we were just like, well, this is different. And so that kind of just evolved into obscene stealers, and yeah, uh, crazy. Yeah. and we're it's, we're like eight or ten songs deep by now, and yep. dude, we're fucking murdering shit. It we is, have 
yeah. idea. We have prepped almost EP2, I think, and yeah. we could almost start already with EP3, so we have I, something I, to deliver. I but think it's so. We're gonna very have to crazy. We, we, we both met on Instagram, you know, and you see what can happen when you meet people on Instagram and click Well, together. actually, I, I've got to give um, a big shout out to Dominic Ravinius, um, yeah. co-founder of Mixing Night. Uh, Dom actually introduced us, um, or at least Dom told me about you, and I I became aware of you long before I met you, and yeah. and vice versa. And then it just felt like meeting an old friend when we finally uh, ended up uh, getting together and working on that Christmas song. So uh, I am super, super stoked to see what the future holds with you and I, with Obscene Stealers. Me too. And, me too. Um, and uh, so we're putting this out on streaming too we're not only going for like sync music we we hope to rule sync world but um but you know this is a we're going for streaming so spotify if you're watching find obscene stealers danger on spotify and put it on your playlists uh save it you know put the heart on it and download it all of those things help the algorithm tremendously and help us grow and man we could really really use some mixing night love tonight so please uh, grab your other device and uh, go to Spotify, Obscene Stealers, and stream Danger all fucking broadcast. I love you all dearly. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think our next single is probably going to be Side Effects. And then, yeah, I think so. And then later on tonight, we're doing the uh, uh, vocal microphone shootout, and we're going to uh, have Danny sing, and Danny sang Start the Show. That's probably going to be our third single, so people get a little preview of that once again tonight. But man, we he, got some fucking bangers, dude. I'm he did a crazy, excited. crazy job on Starter Show. That's a, that's really a banger. That's a number one hit, I would oh, say so. Oh. But you know, it's like <laughs> I, I think so too. And Danny sung the fuck out of it, so we get to hear her sing again tonight. I need to get back to my show. Um, is there anything you want to tell the viewers uh, about you or us or anything before we wrap up? Yes, stream Obscene Stealers like crazy. Give it a hit. And uh, can I share sync music business here? Is that possible? Should I? Okay, guys, we are building a new course for people which want to get their music into sync. Just go on our website. It's called syncmusicbusiness.com. And uh, we are building that course for January 23, but you can unroll already. And we are trying to get you into sync jobs like crazy. You know? We'll see. All right. Ken Lewis as well. You know, <laughs> hey, uh, we're bringing the thunder, man. All together. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. I am going to um, get you. back to the show. It is awesome seeing you. And thank you for contributing to the broadcast. Uh, you are a rock star. And thank I, I so will much. talk to you soon, man. Go to sleep. It's late in Germany uh, right now. <laughs> going to watch everything. Take care. Right. Hope to talk soon, okay? Good yeah. night. Bye-bye. See you. Oh, Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. Uh, what a talented dude. Um, what is next on, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you, I think I showed you earlier, but since I just shouted it out, Spotify, Danger. Here, let me give you a pre- Coming down! Danger! Yo, this the moment I was born for, running, running on a long road, who can stop me, only Lord knows, only Lord knows, it's the alpha, faith that can move mountains. If you ever try to doubt it, you already know the outcome. What you thought it was, man, it's time. I am no, I am no the one. They about to see that I'm second to none. I'm on the run. How can I stop when we only begun? See an army circling round, top of your lungs. Go let it out. Blowing the horn, let the trumpet sound. Put up your walls, be tearing them down. Jericho. Jericho. Danger. 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 It's going down. It's coming down. God damn. Shit. What a way to fucking get out the gate. Woo. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get to some q and I'm going to get the show back on track. Okay. Uh, Steven asks, hey, Ken, uh, I know you most likely haven't heard them yet, but from what you've seen or read, okay, do you think of the new, what do you think of the new IK multimedia uh, Atmos monitors where they can emulate other speakers and do some of the other features? Uh, I was not aware that they could emulate other speakers and do some of the other features. That's really interesting. Um, I haven't heard them. Uh, I, I use the, 
IK MTMs right now for Atmos, and I got the uh, uh, micros in the clouds. Sounds great. Um, the the problem with uh, IK is they have no subs, so I don't. I guess you can get a third party sub, but that's a little strange. Um, but the speakers themselves sound great. Uh, Robert Hill asks, uh, "Hey Ken, for sync licensing, where do you start?" Well, Robert, hopefully you just caught the uh, Michael Moss interview. Um, he's a wealth of information. Watch the rest of this episode. We have at least four, th three or four or five more segments from people dropping sync gems on you, and I'm going to be dropping them all night. Uh, you know, here's a couple of my sync gems for you guys. Uh, one, you need great music. If you're if you think your B level or your A minus or even your A level is gonna cut it, you need to be as good as the radio. But you don't need to sound like the radio. That's the great thing about sync is you don't have to write a song that will work on as a single. You can write a song about a topic that would never work as a single. And all you need to do is tag it correctly in disco and the right supervisor will hopefully eventually find it. And if they do, and it sounds amazing and it's perfect for their scene, then you just gotta sync. That's kinda how it works. Um, let's see, I know I have other suggestions. I should have written this shit down, but there's only so many hours in the day. Um, uh, let's see, make great music. That's certainly one. Um, and be super targeted with your uh, pitches. Don't just scatter shot. That's never going to work. And if you send too much, which is usually more than one or two, uh, for an opportunity, um, they're going to look at that packed folder full of songs and go, I don't have time to listen to these songs. Uh, and that folder goes into the trash. So, um, fair warning. Um, let's see. What is next on the show? Uh, let me let me knock out some more questions. I'm liking this. Uh, Tom Greenwood asks, Hey, Ken, should vocal levels be a little lower uh, when mixing for sync to leave space for dialogue? Absolutely not. Um, uh, we just addressed that with Michael Moss, that you provide them stems. And that way, if they want the vocal a little bit lower or remove completely during dialogue, they can just mute it or dial it back. Uh, but you should mix your song to be as good as it possibly can sound, uh, the best representation of that song, whatever it is. Uh, that's what you should be doing. Um, and uh, uh, I think trailers and things like that, you mix the vocals way up. Um, let's see. Uh, but uh, also, as a mixer working predominantly on production and library music, should I be figuring out Atmos for production library music? Um, I doubt it. Maybe. I don't know. That should have been a Michael Moss question. Damn it. Um, I, I'll be, I don't know if Michael knows either. I don't think anybody knows that question, and I would be remiss to answer it because I'll probably tell you the wrong thing. Um, but I do think Atmos is here to stay. I think eventually it'll make its way into licensing, but um, whether they upmix it or use Atmos stems is debatable. Um, John Pepin asks, Hey Ken, I need a definitive answer. Is it appropriate for a sync artist to contact a music supervisor directly, or is it something you should only do if you know the music supervisor already? Uh, you can contact a music supervisor directly, but don't load their inbox with shit directly. Approach them as succinctly short, sweet, to the point as possible. Ask them if they will listen. And if they respond yes, then you send them links, not files. Don't send an MP3 or an attachment. You know, a lot of times they're listening on their phone and they have a slow connection and... If you're the one that makes them not get all of their texts for 10 minutes, you're going to be the one that never gets licensed. So links only, um, downloadable if possible. Uh, let's see. Um, and uh, uh, if you do reach out to people, you better have heat. I mean, you better have heat. And reach out to people that make sense for what you do. You know, if the music supervisor only deals with 50s period music, and there are some that do, um, then what are you approaching them for unless you're a crooner? So uh, think, think about stuff like that and really try and target your, your uh, submissions as well as possible. And speaking of the disco system, so I am going to... Um, 
if you don't know what disco is, let me show you. I'll just show you. I can't show you the full thing, but this is disco.ac. And virtually everybody in sync world uses disco. Um, and it's basically, uh, I'm going to let Jonathan Garcia tell you about disco. And uh, he's going to drop five secrets that you probably wouldn't have learned on your own. Uh, without further ado, here is Jonathan Garcia. What is good? My name is Jonathan Garcia. I'm the assistant engineer to Ken Lewis. And I'm going to talk about five top disco secrets. And I'm not talking this. A. A. Okay. Number one. Set up specific playlists. In disco, you can set up private playlists of your songs and send them to specific people. Your playlist can be specific to the opportunity or more general like fight scenes playlist or breakup playlist. How sad. Numero dos. Make your playlist a cover gif. Replace your cover image with a gif. For instance, use a cool guy walking away from explosions if the playlist is being pitched for action type syncs. Or a gif of someone winning a first place trophy showing the playlist feels like victory. Pretend that was like a bunch of horns. <laughs> Victorious horns, triumphant. Number three, use the auto tagger. You can use this on individual tracks or entire playlists. It takes about five minutes to render your tags. It uses AI software that uses sync-based vocabulary learned from music supervisors and their creative briefs. It can describe the sounds and moods of your record. Holy cow. You see that? Chitiri. Click live. Click the live button in your profile after you set up and organize all of your libraries, channels, tracks, playlists, and profile. If you don't, you could be pitching or sending out all of your information to labels, clients, you name it, and no one will have access to your music. Set account to live when you're ready to pitch. Woo! Number five, or numero cinco, Metadata. You must add metadata. Metadata allows your song to be found in search. You must add metadata in the disco system. This helps music supervisors find the exact perfect song for their scene by tagging your song with genre, tempo, mute, mood, lyrics. Metadata does not transfer into disco. You must add it on your own and have your own tags or use the auto tagger. Okay, I hope these five disco secrets help you keep staying alive in the sync game. Signing off. Captain, back to you. Thank you, Jonathan Garcia, assistant extraordinaire, tracking engineer around here too. You've been racking up the credits. Uh, Jonathan was tracking engineer on some of the uh, Obscene Stealer stuff. Um, let's see, what's, what's next after Jonathan Garcia Disco Secrets? I'm gonna go straight to one more. So I am signed, let me, don't show the screen yet, let me pull up the website. I am signed to Lyric House in Los Angeles, and they're a sync agent. And, um, all right, show the screen. So here's the Lyric House main web page. Here is their placements pin. <laughs> this literally will go for like minutes. You could just keep stro scrolling and scrolling. These are all of the shows and uh, things that they have placed music in. Uh, and a few of them are mine. Um, and uh, so Flannery works for Lyric House, and I'm going to let her drop five more sync gems on you from one of the best sync houses to do it. Here's Flannery. Hi, my name's Flannery, and I'm the Film and TV Pitching Manager at Lyric House. We work across all scripted film and TV, as well as reality TV, which is my personal favorite. During my time at Lyric House, I've had syncs on MTV, VH1, CW, ABC, Hulu, Peacock, Netflix, just to name a few. And so I have five pieces of advice for anyone who's looking to get their song placed for the first time. Number one, be authentic, stay true to who you are and to your sound. If you veer off from your sound, it'll show and it just won't be as good as if you were just being your authentic self. Number two, try not to write about romantic love too often. Everyone writes about romantic love. That is that many more songs that you have to compete against. If you can write about something else like family or friends, it opens up a whole new world of possibility for you. Number three, don't be too lyrically specific. If you get too specific, 
people won't be able to relate to your music if it only relates to you. Number four, don't use uncleared samples. We can't pitch your music if there's uncleared samples or interpolations because you don't want to get sued. So either have it be cleared or just, just avoid the sample altogether. And number five, have patience. Getting a sync deal can take a while and then getting a sync placement on top of that takes more time. So just have patience, trust in the process, and then you'll be good. That's all. Bye. Thank you, Flannery. That is really great advice. And, you know, the last one, be patient. That is exactly what Lyric House told me when they signed me. They said, look, we think you're going to do great in sync, but it's probably going to take us six or seven months to get your music into our system, out to our people, and get them to put it in their shows. And there was nothing for six months. And then, like a faucet, the sinks just turned on. And holy shit, they just didn't turn off for the longest time. And they're still coming. Um, and, uh, you know, sync is usually a build. You know, you got to work it. You got to always feed the beast and um, hope that you have uh, a couple great songs to lead the way. One, You know, one thing that I will mention is... Um, there's uh, the project that we've done best with uh, in sync is the Des Rocks project, and we've I think we've licensed about ten songs from the Des Rocks project to sync, but far far and away two of those songs have brought us in the most money, and basically what that tells you is you need you need a flag bearer you need a great song or two to open up sync doors for you, and then if those music supervisors know you fall in love with your music and hear other things that you're doing, they may pull those songs in, even if they're not as good as the big one, because they just, now they're a fan. And uh, and then other music supervisors hear your music and scenes, and that's how this, and that, that's how you grow. It takes time, it takes consistency, it takes patience. You guys can do it if you want to do it. Um, and it takes great music. I will keep har harping on that, because I think almost everybody skips that step at first. Step one, make great music first. If you think your music is really good, you're probably not going to place it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to the beat battle. Oh, man. Holy shit. You guys so threw down for the beat battle. I was so impressed. Holy crap. Um, so let me uh, break this down for you. Uh, yeah, I can. How's that? Um, okay. Uh, the Beat Battle, sponsored by SSL. And we are giving away three of these bad boys tonight. Um, the SSL Channel Strip 2 uh, plug-in. Uh, the top three places each get an SSL Channel Strip 2. This is the real SSL from the real company. Uh, the UC1 can control it if you have a UC1. Um, I don't know if other controllers can control it, probably. Um, and, uh, uh, but you can use it just as like a regular, it's the best SSL channel strip. I mean, of course it is. So <laughs> it really feels like a console. So we're giving three of those to the top three. I served you guys up a starter and you guys smashed it. Oh my Lord. The directions you took it. So cool. So, um, I think I got, a I got as many into the show as I possibly could. We had so many entries, and so many of them were just really, really incredible. And I'm sorry for all the people that I had to cut, but I had to narrow it down to something. And here's six minutes of... Here's the starter first, then I'll play the six minutes. <laughs> And to kick it off, we have Eternal Sound. Eric Iverson. Jai Tui. Just a lone cowboy, but I don't play for Jerry Jones. Watch 
out for clones. They try to snatch you for your dome. And if you get caught, you be one dead mighty gold. I'm swole with the flows. Get gone like a ghost. I puff and I'm lost in the matrix, but still in the zone. Shiv and Jason. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. MBI. Ryan Peppin, he's going to be on the show later. What? Hakan Melnberg. Alex Silver. Bobby Thimgen. Ben Kruger. Rajap Rao. Angelo Pierce. Third place, we have Ben Ellery. And here's your winners. This is Ben Ellery. Franz Fritz, first runner up. That is super sinkable, friend. And your winner, Johnny Kyle. Fire.
Congratulations, Ben Ellery, Franz Fritz, and Johnny Kyle. All three of you guys win an, a Solid State Logic uh, Channel Strip 2. That thing is beast mode. You guys are going to love it. Uh, congratulations, guys, and thank you for everybody who participated. Man, we got so many incredible entries. It was just amazing. And, you know, the, the thing that the reason that I really do the beat challenge is so that you guys all see and hear that all of these different creatives can take the exact same start and go like spokes on a wheel in different directions with the exact same idea and come up with drastically different results in different lanes, different genres, and that's music. One isn't better than the other. It's this works for the artist that's creating it. You're just creating art for yourself that you've got to love. And the hope is that you create something that's so special other people love it too, but you got to starts with you. And you know, and that should be enough. Uh let's see. What, um, let me uh, answer a few more questions. Um, we didn't know what the answer to this was. Adam Goddar asks, hey Ken, what pan law are you using in your sessions? Um, minus three, 4.5, minus six. I don't even think there is a minus six pan law. I think we're at whatever Pro Tools defaults to, I believe is what we're at, which I think is 2.5 or three. I don't really, I've never given it any thought. Um, I don't care what's going on under the hood. I care what's coming out of the speakers. And but you know, also I'm I I know the tools by now. So and you know, you got to learn the tools so that you can forget them. Um, <laughs> Sasha Pax uh, asks, "Hey Ken, if creating a brand new setup from scratch, would you go with a Mac or a PC?" Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. Um, if you can show the overhead cam, uh, this little cube right here is a new Mac Studio. Um, this is the very base, base model. It was the only one I could get for months, so I just got it. And it it screams. It's doing great for my system. I probably won't keep up with the biggest sessions, but man, it is a beast. And I would, if I had to do it, I, I mean, the one I bought was the $4,000, I think, Ultra, um, the M1 Ultra with the two M1s on in it. Um, and that thing is like power for the next 10 years. I don't, I don't see, I don't see it needing much more than that ever. Um, so I, I would base it around a new Mac studio, uh, that is future tech. Uh, Apple is designing their own chips now. They used to use, um, who's that old chip maker? Don't even remember them anymore. Um, and now they make their own proprietary chips, which are much faster. They work much better in Apple machines. And the M1s are proprietary to Apple now, so they're going to be the chips for them for a long time, uh, and you're going to be good. So I would, I would go with that. Um, let's see, am I on track here? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, let me go to sync tips from Danny Felt. Uh, these are gems. Hey, my name is Danny Felt, and here are some tips for sync. Number one, make sure you have your instrumental tracks. Do not submit a song and not have instrumental tracks. Number two, build relationships. Do not just spam people and send music supervisors your music without permission. Ask for permission, that is super important. Please do this. Number three, please get disco or box. Make it easy for the supervisors. Please just make playlists on disco or box. Be professional. Number four, make sure you include your metadata, publisher, PRO, writers, all of that. If you send a song that doesn't have metadata, you are just throwing it in the trash. Number five would be to make sure you have permission from your writers when you're pitching music. Um, I've had it where the people have sent me music and then their writers don't even know that they are pitching it and then they didn't have permission. Make sure you have permission. Super important. That was five tips from Danny Felt with Sync. Thank you very much, Danny Felt. Great, great tips. Those are real gems. Uh, I'm going to go to ear training, and then after ear training is the uh, live microphone shootout. We are shooting out 
my vintage, amazing sounding Sony C800G against a brand new Ericsson Labs EL800, which is a C800G clone. And in my experience, I haven't used other clones, so I don't know. But this clone is a fucking clone. Holy shit. I really was shocked at how accurate it is. Um, I've never heard a microphone sound like my C800 ever. The closest one I ever heard was the Manly Ref C, which I love, but I would put it number two to a C800. And the EL800 just sounds exactly like my mic. It's amazing. Um, so that's coming up next after ear training. So let's launch some ear training so we can get there. Boom. Ear training tonight is orchestral instrument identification. Download, if you don't have it yet, the ear training sheet in the description of the video you are watching right now. Go grab it uh, so that you can follow along. You have two missions tonight. Let me grab my sheet. You need to, so I'm going to play you a bunch of solo uh, instruments. They're all orchestral instruments. Uh, they're all common to the orchestra. You're not going to hear anything else. It's going to be one instrument at a time. I have 20 of them. You need to tell me what the exact instrument name is, and what family of the orchestra it comes from. So woodwinds, strings, percussion, brass, or keyboards. Uh, and uh, there's 20 examples. Uh, I count them out as we go. Uh, there's a total of 40 points, bragging rights on the line. And, um, oh, the, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention about ear training tonight is a lot of us are creators, beat makers, producers, I am, um, and I, uh, you know, I create a lot. And I use orchestral instruments a lot in my productions. And if you're doing the same, then you should learn more about what the orchestra sounds like and how to get the best sounds for your production. Go to the orchestra, see what they do. See how they hand parts off from section to section to section. See how they trade melodies. It's really, it's a, it's a, a truly unique experience and it will inform you as a producer, like, oh, you know, I always thought that I wanted violins, but you know, the violas are a bit warmer than the violin. And actually what I've wanted this time is viola pads instead of these high piercing violin pads. Huh, who knew? That's what this ear training is for, baby. So uh, let's go. Um, 20 uh, examples. Number one. One.
15. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Twenty. How are you all doing so far? Uh, you know, drop us a comment and let us know if you are enjoying this ear training. It's been a, I've been meaning to do this one for a while. Okay, listen number two, orchestral instrument ID. What is the instrument? What family of instruments does it come from? Woodwind, strings, percussion, brass, keyboard. One. Sixteen. Seventeen. the big reveal uh, how did you all do here are the answers boom let me get them a little bigger for you guys that's no, not gonna get any bigger okay now you can see what the answers are while you listen one more time it's three minutes through and then we're back to the regular show 
Number one, viola, strings. Come on, Ken. It's deeper than a violin. Violin's higher in pierce. Two. Two, woodwind, bassoon. A lot of times with bassoon, you hear those really short staccato -y type type notes. Really cool. Uh, number three is double bass. Who got that one right? Three. Four. That is below cello range. Uh, number four is timpani. Number five is trombone. Now cello. That, those last notes definitely... It started in the same range as violas. You know, these strings cross over in ranges. Uh, and then the cello goes deeper. Uh, but not as low as the double basses. So each of these has, like, ranges that they fit in. This is a clarinet. That is not clarinet. This is clarinet. I was going to say, that doesn't sound like a fucking clarinet to me. Uh, number seven. Come on, Ken. There we go. Clarinet. Seven. Wood Eight. Eight is English horn. Uh, this is a woodwind. Looks in between an oboe and a clarinet. Regular flute. It's a woodwind. Here's the violin. This is one violin playing double notes. Obviously in the string family. Uh, next we have French horn. So who knows that I uh, produced the horn section on all of the lights? Well, I did. Uh, it was all live horns. Danny Flam played almost all of the live horns. You can get it at Danny Flam at NewYorkBrass.com. Uh, he's a brilliant musician. Um, we used on that French horns, trombones, bass trombones, uh, tr trumpets, flugelhorns, bass trumpets. Uh, man, there was, like, we threw the kitchen sink at that shit. Tuba. Uh, yeah, okay, moving on. Um, 13 is a uh, trumpet. Fourteen, tuba. Gong. Fifteen. Percussion, of course. Tuba is brass, of course. Uh, number 16 is piccolo, which is a woodwind. A piccolo is smaller and higher pitched than a flute. So here's something as a programmer, you know, if you're making a beat and you want a flute in that range, don't go for a flute. You want to find a piccolo sound because that's out of the range of a real flute. So any sample that you find uh, is going to, they're going to have to stretch to get to those notes and create them artificially, whereas a, a piccolo plays them naturally. Okay, uh, number 17 is xylophone. <laughs> Uh, 18 is oboe. So oboe is a woodwind. It um, looks really similar to uh, an English horn. Mm -hmm. 
19 harpsichord. Mm -hmm. Harpsichord sounds like that, but looks like a piano. Uh, and 20 is bass clarinet. You get bonus points if you got bass clarinet, because how many people even know that there's a bass clarinet? T. But, it, but it's in the orchestra. T. Boom. How did you all do? Post up your results. So the guy that's about to drop sync knowledge on you has nearly a thousand placements so just let that one sink in oh he is he's a working motherfucker my friend rhythm j hey what's going on ken this is rhythm j thank you so much for having me uh contribute to mixing night with a little bit about myself uh i'm a current director at four and one music uh prior to that i've been in the general sync publishing royalties industry for, for about 15 years Prior to all that, I'm, I'm a producer first, a creator, and I have uh, music on over uh, 800 uh, TV shows uh, worldwide. I'd like to talk about the five, five mistakes creatives make breaking into sync. Number one, uh, it's the whole uh, let me make a TV beat real quick mentality. That mentality to me, that's, that's dead. Uh, I feel like if you try to do that now, it's not going to fly. Um, it's not going to place. You're just wasting your time. You have to treat the music that you're trying to get on TV and film the same way that you would treat a song you're trying to get placed with an artist. There is no B-level tier anymore. We are way past the days of MTV Cribs and Pimp My Ride. Second one, uh, this is more my opinion than anything else, but uh, blindly dumping your tracks into really big, giant um, music production libraries. Nowadays, it might not be the best idea to dump your tracks in there because there's so many tracks within that large library where you're in competition with thousands of other people. Uh, not to mention that a lot of those giant libraries in the beginning, they made a big mistake in letting everybody in. They have like a submit music here link and they just let everybody in. And so I feel like if, if you submit tracks to a more boutique libraries, uh, mid level size libraries, I feel like that's the way to go nowadays. Another third uh, mistake that creators make uh, while breaking into sync would be giving up their writer share. And this is something that's a, a very sad and but true reality in this uh, industry is a lot of founders of a lot of the larger companies or even smaller companies, they'll snatch up the writer share, which belongs to the writers that actually create the music. I mean, if you made the track, you should receive the money for it, uh, not someone else. Uh, fourth mistake that I see a lot of is sampling. And I'm not just talking about blatantly lifting something from a mastered record that's been out in the past, but people try to sneak in little sound effects. And you're just like, no, that's from a Drake record. What are you doing? Oh yeah, you get one to two seconds and, and you're, you're fine. Like that's, I don't know where that myth came from, but no matter what kind of sample it is, don't, don't do it. Just, just don't sample <laughs> when you're, when, especially when you're submitting to uh, TV, please. Uh, and then, Last but not least, uh, fading out your tracks. You should not end your tracks with a fade out, but as long as it lands on that one, uh, usually that's what uh, people look for. So those are my uh, five mistakes that creators make breaking into sync. Check us out, Made By Us Music. Uh, I'm the co-founder along with my guys, uh, PJ Exec and Jay Hatch. Shout out to them. Salute, Ken. Rhythm, Jay. Thank you very much, dude. A wealth of information tonight. It's really incredible. Uh, thank you for everybody that contributed uh, to tonight's show. It's really, and um, we're so lucky to have so many creatives um, helping out. Let me see. Did I get to all of the... I feel like I have more questions. Um, bu -bu -bum. Uh, Corey Patton asks, Hey, Ken, I've heard uh, that it's better for a producer to release their completed tracks... Uh, and register them blah, 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 before pitching them to music supervisors and libraries. Blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, you can use Disco. Disco.ac. We Jonathan did a segment on it earlier. Everybody that pitches uses Disco. Disco, you can keep your playlist public or private, um, and you can create as many private playlists as you want. You can tailor them to exactly whoever, whatever opportunity, and you just send... You create that playlist for, you know, the pitch for this scene, for this movie, and blah, blah, blah. 
and then you put two songs in there that you think are the perfect ones, and then you send it off. Um, they don't have to be released. Now, supervisors have bosses, so it certainly helps them when a supervisor can license a song from an artist who has some heat and who's doing well in some capacity because it insulates them a little bit more and it offers the possibility that some of the fans of them are going to become fans of the show. So, uh, you know, it makes good sense. So in that regard, the more heat you have as a producer, as an artist, as a whatever, that can really help feed your licensing because simply more people know about you, more people like you, uh, other people are clearly reacting to you, so the music su supervisors have some confidence level in reacting to you as well. There you go. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, oh, um, Cowin? Uh, Cowin? Cowin asks, hey Ken, what's the best way to approach getting sync licenses? Uh, what are the main steps on how to connect with sync license providers? Um, my big advice is to get a sync agent if you possibly can. And they are very, very hard to get um, because everybody wants to do sync and uh, it's, it's a tough game. So uh, you need to put in the legwork like me and Michael Moss were talking about earlier and really make sure that you're throwing down and you've got some heat before you approach a sync agent. And I would even, like my own personal experience, I went out and got us $60,000 worth of sync before I ever went to Lyric House. And then I took that and I was like, hey, we have this project, we have all of this music, and we've already proven that we can do it, and we're streaming like gangbusters. Uh, and then they looked at the whole thing and they were like, fuck yeah, okay, we got some heat here. All right, this is reacting, we think we can sync, okay, let's, let's go. And that's, that's how that happened. So I didn't just like blind go to them and say like, hey, do you like me? It's usually not the way it goes. You got to put in the legwork. You got to make shit happen for yourself because nobody cares about you until there's a reason to care. So, and usually the reason to care is not the quality of your music. That's the reason to care come. That's the second. They need a reason to care about you and then they will listen to your music. Um... I'm going to go to Marcus Manderson, uh, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. And, oh, one more. Uh, Jai Price asks, uh, hey, Ken, what would be the best pitching approach aside from just submitting? Um, disco, uh, a sync agent. Um, and, you know, uh, LinkedIn is kind of a potentially good resource. Uh, get, a, like, a LinkedIn professional account. It's a little bit expensive, but if you use it, it's not. And you can reach out to, I'd say there's probably hundreds of, of uh, music supervisors on uh, LinkedIn. You just have to find them, and most of them won't respond to you. Keep it short, keep it focused, and one will eventually. And that's then you get one, then you get three, then you get ten. Um, okay, we're going to go to Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery. And he brings you more sync gems. Man, you guys are getting the goods tonight. Um, here is... Where is Marcus Manders? There is Marcus Manders. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Madam Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Madam Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night Madam Mystery moment, we're going to be talking all about the secrets, the secrets of sync. If you missed, I didn't do the hands, if you missed the November 24th episode of 2021, that was another sync episode where there were so many gems dropped in that episode. We're going to continue that conversation in this one, but definitely go back and check that one out. Shout out to Wednesday Ann for sharing some gems as she's currently enrolled in a sync course. I believe we're taking sync classes all about sync. She shared some gems that I will include some of those here in this presentation. Let's get into it. Most importantly, when you are getting into sync, make sure you add metadata or metadata, depending on where you live in the world, um, to your tracks. What is metadata, metadata? That is where you put in what are the key instruments you might put in, what is the mood, what is the vibe of the tracks. Um, you can add metadata in iTunes, you can add it on the platforms that you upload it to. Some platforms, some libraries have their own metadata tagging software. Some use AI tagging. Just make sure you have as much information in there as possible. I'm gonna share with you how I put in the metadata 
in iTunes. So here's an iTunes track that I have. Obviously, the title is called Rock Q. The artist is me. The album artist is me. I also have my the fingers name in there. Under composer, I actually put in the publisher and the writer PRO information. So you see I have the writer first and then the slash and the publishing information. Under grouping, I put one stop. The genre, of course, for this one, it was a rock Q, so it was rock. And then all the way at the bottom there where it says comments, that's where I put in some metadata there. So I have notes. I have in the vibe. I might have some instruments there. I might say it's instrumental or beat, uh, things like that. There's also a, a limit on the characters you can put there. And then I also have the sync and controlled, uh, sync and master controlled uh, 200%. You can say 100%. Um, I really BMI uses a 200% scale. It gets kind of weird, but 100, 200%, however you want to put it. And then for licensing, I put in my name, email. Also, you can include your phone number. Just make it really easy for them to contact you if and when your music is placed. And if they don't have that built into their platform, you can have it built into the file itself. Next, I have some sync notes. Um, number one, this is not in any type of order other than the order that they came to mind. Uh, paid libraries, if you're paying to put your music in a library, just consider the pros and cons. Consider the pros and cons of libraries that don't offer any backend, any royalty things. It might just be, hey, we, pay, we buy out your song um, for licensing. It might be exclusive or non-exclusive. Also look for those terms, whether you want your music to be exclusive or not exclusive and whether or not they are hiring you as a musician as a music creator exclusively or not exclusively. Also, don't discount smaller niche libraries because those are where some of the bigger placements can be landed from the smaller libraries that have those relationships with music supervisors and companies and directors and things like that. Uh, metadata can only be embedded in an AIF or MP3 file. There are some companies that require you to upload a WAV file. So just make sure if you're uploading a WAV file that they have a way to embed the metadata on their platform so that it's linked to that WAV file. Also, follow the brief and submit well before the deadline. Double check, triple check the deadline, follow the brief, the guidelines, and register with your PRO. Make sure you register as a writer or a publisher or both, depending on the, the deal you have. Definitely, definitely do your research and check out those registration things, but make sure you are registered and affiliated with at least a PRO. If you're in the US, that would be ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. Make sure you're registered there. Um, now, here's some sync resources. I'm going to share this. Uh, I'm not going to click these links for you, but I'm going to share this in the Discord group where you can click on these links. I have a YouTube playlist that has about 50 videos and hours and hours of sync interviews with different different sync supervisors, music supervisors. These are not interviews I've conducted. These are just when I find something online, I add it to this playlist and I share it with the world. So I'm sharing that with you. And then the rest of these links here are either Facebook uh, or Instagram links to people that you should follow on Instagram or those sort of, those resources. Check out their podcast if they have any. Check out their resources. All about sync. Clint Music, Incredible Sync Guy, XJ Will, another Incredible Sync Guy, 85 Productions. Um, shout out to Nelson over there. Excalibur Zero, uh, Daraj, whose real name is Jared. And it took me forever to realize that his artist name is his real name backwards. Um, really big guy in sync. He's landed a lot of trailers and stuff with sync stuff. Um, and then Jay Nolan, again, these are some great people to follow and to connect with in the sync space. More sync resources for you. Follow these. These are some great shows and communities to join either on Facebook or maybe on uh, Clubhouse or something. Uh, sync Report Show, Sync Summit, Sync Collective, Sync It, Sync or Swim, In Sync. I, I had that on there twice. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, everything Sync. Follow these communities. Sometimes within their Facebook groups or within their communities, they have briefs. Uh, say, hey, we need music for this by the end of the day. Submit it. They have a brief there, so follow that brief. Definitely join some of these communities. And then uh, here I have at the top there hundreds of sync libraries that will take you to a PDF with hundreds and hundreds of sync libraries. You got to do your research. Um, right now I'm going through hundreds of them myself for both sync and trailer music, and I probably do maybe about ten a week, and then I'm adding maybe about one or two a week. And yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. But um, you put in a couple. You put in let's say three six months of work of doing the research on the sync library. And next thing you know, you're getting briefs every day to submit to. Um, there's also an article about startup tips for production music composers for uh, a, a great guy in the sync space. Um, there's Control Camp. They also have briefs on there. It's a free website. You can join a free community. They also have a clubhouse group where they're interviewing people in the sync space. Then you have Songwriters Hub who also has a clubhouse group and a free community. Musicians Peer Support run by our friend Rachel who does a lot of great interviews with people in the sync space, uh, trailer space, uh, audio mixing engineers, things like that. And then you have Ari's Take. I've watched a lot of his interviews on YouTube, where he's interviewing music supervisors, people in the sync space, and then also other aspects there. So definitely follow those resources. That is all I have for you today. I was flying through that. I'm going to share this presentation in the Discord group, and you can click through all the links. Definitely do your research. It's going to take months and months and months and years and years and years of research and fun exploration. Enjoy the journey. This has been Marcus Manderson sharing some secrets or secrets with you. Hopefully you enjoyed this Mixing Night Mystery Moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right. All right. Peace. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Man, I love your segments, dude. Uh, so much information there. And if you go to uh, the Mixing Night Discord, he's got links for all of that stuff all sorted out there. 
And Marcus is known for just finding the absolute best uh, free or inexpensive resources and curating them and giving them to you. So thank you once again, Marcus, for curating the best shit for our viewers. You are exceptional. Um, uh, I think that uh, I'll, if there's any questions, um, oh, you know, oh, I know what I wanted to, I, let me, I want to show you the Obscene Steelers website. I'm super happy about this. So, so we launched Obscene Steelers today. Uh, Danger dropped today. Uh, it's our first single. We plan on putting out a single every month or two, uh, hopefully one a month, uh, from now until the dawn of, or till the end of time. Um, and we're already stacking material and trying to better ourselves and best what we've already done. And uh, yeah, this is going to be, we're going to be around for a while. So I just want to show you the website. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so here's, <laughs> da, 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 da. we have the funnest li lyric video. There's a theme to what we do. Go. This the moment I was born for. Running, running on a long road. Who can stop me? Only Lord knows. Only Lord knows. It's the alpha. Fake that can move mountains. If you ever try to doubt it, you already know the outcome. What you thought it was, man, it's time. I am the, I am the one. They about to see that I'm second to none. I'm on the run. How can I stop when we only be gone? See an army circling round. Top of your lungs. Go let it out. Blowing the horn. Let the trumpet sound. Put up your walls. Be tearing them down. Jericho. Jericho. Danger. Danger. Oof. I'm an artist now. Who Who knew? Yeah. Seems right. Uh... So, please support Obscene Steelers. Uh, share with your friends if you like the music. Um, hopefully, we're going to be around for a really long time. What was that question that was just on screen? Uh, there's a link tree with sh socials, I believe. Um, well, our Instagram is obscene Steelers or It's just obscene Steelers. So, there's a link tree on Instagram. You can find all of our stuff there. But you guys know what to do. You're more technically savvy than I am. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know what... Uh, Okay. What did Michael Moss answer? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. What is there anything else to wrap up with the show or am I going to call it a night? Um, I think, man, we got everything in. Holy cow. What a show. Well, um, this has been Ken Lewis for mixing night. Uh, you know, I also didn't notice, uh, two, two more things I want to mention. Let me just talk to you for a minute. Who's still who's still here? Let's let's talk. Uh, first, Mixing Night founder and brilliant human being Dominic Ravinius. Dom Ravinius is uh, headed to L.A. for um, a month of just vacation and relaxing and meetings and shit like that. So, uh, if you're out in L.A. and you want to connect, reach out to Dom. Um, and uh, what else is going on? Next month is producer night. I believe October 4th or 5th. When is our next show? Our next show is... Where is it? There it is. Our next show is October 5th, and I believe it's producer night. Is that right, Jonathan? Um, and if it is, whenever producer night is, I'm going to be reaching out to the heaviest hitters I can and get some gems for you guys, some interviews going on. I'll, I'll cook up something special for you. No worries. Uh, so that's all happening October 5th. The group buy goes on for one month. Uh, it ends on October 5th. I think a lot of people are going to be in on it if you heard that shootout. It's ridiculous. Uh, and uh, what else is going on? Um, I, I'm probably going to launch a, a new beat challenge about mid-month. Um, I'm working on a sponsor right now. I think I have one. Uh, we'll see if that comes together. Um, congrats to the Beat Challenge winners tonight. You guys threw down. Man, that Beat Challenge was so much fun. Okay, well, uh, thanks for tuning in on Sync Night with me and the Mixing Night crew. Uh, from all of us to all of you, y'all have a great night.